Thanks to American television, I grew up with the idea that credit cards are just for rewards and points, you know, that kind of thing. If you look at American credit cards, like the really good ones, you can get $300 just for signing up for a credit card. There are countless videos and blogs about people who travel for free thanks to their credit card rewards. But you know, that's America. I am not American and I don't plan on going there anytime soon. So, you know, the next best thing for me would have been e-bucks because growing up, I was exposed to a lot of South African television and there were e-bucks adverts everywhere, every single time. It wasn't until university where I finally learned that, you know, there's another function to credit cards, which is to borrow money. People use them to borrow money, no questions asked, you can use it for whatever you want to do. But even after learning that credit cards are used to borrow money, I still wanted one because I wanted the free money, you know. You get paid for just using a credit card. Like, that's kind of crazy, eh? So I was like, I was thinking, okay, if I have the money to spend, then it surely it's not a problem, right? Yeah. One of the first things I wanted when I started working was a cell phone um, because I'd been using a, an iPhone 5S for the longest time. And a credit card yeah i was finally working because one of the restrictions of getting a credit card is you need a monthly income and as a student that's not really a thing so you know now i have a permanent job i qualify for a credit card i have the income so like you know did some research came across a wide variety of credit cards and first thing i noticed is that they all work pretty much the same way credit cards allow you to borrow money and then you can pay it back over a long ass period of time but at a fairly, fairly high interest rate. Um, that's, that's basically what credit cards are for. That's their main function, right? However, because they all work pretty much the same way, how do you decide which credit card you choose? And that's where the perks, the rewards, the benefits, that's where they all come in play. Since they're all the same, you can use those things to choose which credit card would give you the best value for your money. You know, you don't wanna just be spending money, but if you can actually make some money back whilst you're spending, then like, you know, you know. So when it finally came time for me to get a credit card, the logic was pretty straightforward. I need a credit card whose benefits are worth more than the amount of money I'm gonna spend on the fees and the interest rates, the interest that they're gonna charge me for using their credit card, right? Otherwise, there's no point spending 200 rands on a credit card only to get 100 rands back in benefits. You're losing money. That's not a very good financial decision. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that actually results in you getting a higher credit score. I eventually chose a credit card and I basically transferred all my spending to that card, which is exactly what they want you to do. After all, the best way to maximize on the points you're gonna get from the card is to spend as much money as possible or as much money as you can through that credit card. Anyways, um, if you're going to be shopping for a credit card for points, then there are common perks that you're going to come across and we're going to start going through those things and see you know how you should look at them in order to decide whether you should choose that specific card so the most uh one of the most common perks that you're going to get is travel insurance basically if you travel and something goes wrong they'll pay for it that's travel insurance however there's lots of exceptions uh, one of the most common ones is you have to buy an air ticket for you to activate your travel insurance. So if you're driving outside the country, that, yeah, shame it. Some only apply specifically to international travel. The more expensive your credit card, the better the restrictions. Uh, there aren't as many restrictions and the cover is a lot, a lot more. However, this perk, you should only consider it if you actually do travel, okay? If you don't travel, then you, you shouldn't even be looking at this, eh? Because like, you know, staying on that traveling topic, another perk that they really like bragging about is free access to airport lounges you know when you're flying uh there are these really cool lounges you can just go chill and sip some tea once again this is something you should only consider if you travel that much i haven't been on an airplane in like two years so this would be very irrelevant to me but of course the most common credit credit card reward or perk or benefit is cashback rewards so this is basically where they give you a certain percentage of the money that you've spent through your credit card so for example i bought a uh, my laptop for, uh, for example the asus tough a15 brilliant laptop it cost me 22,000 rands and i used my credit card for that which means that let's say if my credit card had a one percent cashback that means i got 220 rands 
just for spending money through my credit card. It's quite nice, isn't it? However, it's pretty obvious um, since I'm spending money, I'm borrowing money from the bank. If I don't pay that back soon enough, I'll get charged more interest than the money I actually got back. So you gotta be careful. If you're gonna be using your card for that kind of, you know, behavior then you want to pay back that money as soon as you can so that you don't incur any interest otherwise you know the rewards are kind of useless some cash back rewards uh, have very specific conditions for example the woolworths credit card you can only get cash back if you spend money in woolworths and when you get the cash back you get it as woolworths vouchers so you can only spend that money you earned in woolworths so like you have to be a Woolworths shopper for that to make any sense otherwise what's the point if you look at the ebucks rewards program you can get up up to up to eight rands per liter of fuel okay right now fuel is going for like 14 15 rands so that means you can basically buy fuel at half the price it's kind of crazy uh, you can also get up to 15 percent discount when you use uber very nice because uber can be quite expensive but uh, why do they keep saying up to blah 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 well, let's dive into that a little bit. So most of these credit cards, especially like the ones that give the most benefits, use a tiering system. The higher the tier, the more you earn. With eBucks, if you're in tier five, that's when you can get 15% back on Uber, 15%, you know, eBucks for like grocery shopping, 4% off for like whatever, 8%, no, eight rands. Eight rands is a lot, man. Eight rands back for each liter of fuel that you spend, whatever. When you're in tier five, that's only when you actually get those nice benefits. If you're not in tier five, it's a bit questionable. So how do you get to tier five or tier four or whatever? Well, you have to earn certain points and there are certain tasks you have to do to earn those points. For example, if you make at least four payments through the FNB banking app, you're gonna get 2,000 tiering points. If you have at least four debit orders on your account, you're gonna have 1,000 tiering points and so on. And to be in tier one, you need between 1,000 and 5,000 points. And to reach tier five, you need at least 12,000 points. So there's a wide variety of these little tasks and things you have to do to earn more points. And all in all, there's like 40,000 points up for grabs. So there are quite a lot of points. However, the more points you accumulate the harder it gets to actually get those points some of them are quite easy and straightforward but of course not all of them are this easy um, some of them you have to have like a car loan with fnb uh, you need like a home loan with fnb to get like more points and so on so a lot of these especially if you want to get to like tier 4 tier 5 you have to be spending a lot of money to get those points eh? if you're not in a higher tier like tier 4 tier 5 it's kind of hard to justify why you should get a credit card just for the points. So if you're in tier one of the eBucks program, for example, instead of getting the eight rands or the four rands you get when you're on tier five, you only get like 0 0.1 rands. That's 10 cents per liter, which is... As for Uber, instead of getting 15% discount, you're only going to get 0.5% discount. That like what's the point point? and it's a very similar system with all the other major reward programs like um, absa's rewards program standard bank's rewards program and so on they all have a similar tiering structure and even for those credit cards that don't have a tiering structure they usually have very certain conditions you have to meet in order to maximize on those benefits and you usually need to be you know somebody who already spends a lot of money for you to be able to meet those conditions otherwise it would be a bit dumb for you to like spend more money on certain things just so you can get rewards that mm. now to answer the question should you get a credit card just for the points you know just for the cash back rewards that you get well you know the math to figure out whether it's worth it it's kind of straightforward eh if the benefits you get out of it are worth more than the amount of money you spend in fees and interest then yeah it would make financial sense to get it however the myth is irrelevant when it comes to getting a credit card if you have never used a credit card if you've never owned a credit card in your life it would be very naive of you to think that you're going to be able to use it responsibly if you do get one. Banks and credit institutions are in the business of making money, not giving it away. If these reward systems did not end up making money for them, they wouldn't be using them. So you need to keep that in mind. Eh? If you're going to use these things, you need to have a proper mindset that doesn't get carried away 
when you have money and like an endless credit line. I am speaking from experience. I have been tripped myself. I, before I got my credit card, I always thought I was a very frugal person. I could control my spending. So I was like, nah, I know how to spend money until I got a credit card and yeah, no, things just went upside down. I have recovered. Um, I've recovered up to a stage actually. I haven't paid for fuel for the last three months because I'm just using the rewards I'm getting for my credit card. It is entirely possible for you to use a credit card just to get the points and not lose any money out of it. After all, there are some great perks, eh? I'd love to hear your thoughts on credit card reward systems and perks and stuff. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and share with your friends. Let's educate each other out here. Okay, you have a good day.